I've always considered that valve stems on bike tyres let the look of the bike down a bit. Granted, it is only a small thing, but sometimes it is the small things that let a bike down. Way back in the early days of the automotive industry, they seemed to care more about these kind of things than they do today. And Michelin, or Michelin, whichever way you pronounce it, came up with a solution. A full-length valve cap made from brass that was designed to cover and protect the valve thread and tidy the whole area up to make it look more presentable. Also, the longer threads covering the valve stem helped to make sure that there was a better seal and cut down on air loss from the tyre. It was an invention of a bygone era, an era where they cared about the customer and did the job properly. But as we've seen on so many other aspects of motorcycles over the years, customer care becomes diluted, cost becomes king. And somewhere in the dim and distant past, these Michelin valve stem covers eventually disappear and were replaced by cheaper items. Never to be seen again. That is, until now. Moton mentioned to me, I think it must be over a year ago, that they were working on these. I wasn't actually aware that there'd ever been such a thing, and it took quite a bit of research online to find a few examples or photographs of examples. The genuine article is a very rare beast these days, but one or two private collections and museums have them. I knew that Moton Customs had been looking into some accessory valve caps for some time, but the market is saturated with them. They decided that if they were going to go ahead with a project like this, it would have to be something different from the run-of-the-mill valve caps. Moton have named these the Ballista, or I suppose if there's two of them, it's the Ballastair. The reason for the name, I think, being quite obvious, and it was inspired by those original Michelin valve caps. Having said that, Moton had no real pattern, they're not a copy, so these were designed from the ground up, in-house by Moton Customs. There was no information available as to how the originals were constructed, and I do know that Moton explored one or two options for manufacture. They wanted an accessory that would key in with their range of vintage brass parts. This complicated things because brass is relatively heavy and the actual valve caps themselves had to be light enough so that they wouldn't upset the balance of the wheel. They found that they couldn't achieve this by using high pressure die cast methods, something which I think they'd hoped to be able to use initially. And in order to get the weight down, get the walls of the part thin enough, yet still incorporate high strength, they eventually settled on hot forging. A good old fashioned traditional method which unfortunately is time consuming and can be expensive. Not a method that most manufacturers would even consider these days. The ballistas then cut with a full length internal thread followed by a full mirror polish. And I have to say, I think that the extra effort Moton have put into these has been well worth the wait. It's never really made sense to me as to exactly why valve stems are far longer than they need to be. And it would be nice to think that it is a forgotten remnant of that Art Deco period when valve caps like these were commonplace. A period when that original Triumph Speed Twin, the grandfather of all Bonnevilles as we know them today, was born. I don't really know if this type of full-length valve cap was ever fitted to the original Speed Twin, but that's what I love about this whole modern classic group of bikes and the custom scene that's grown up around it. People like Moton Customs are looking back through the history books and resurrecting parts and accessories that were in the day works of art, something that we just don't see in the modern biking world anymore. Recreating gorgeous little parts like this that allow us to physically access that elusive essence of our automotive heritage. And this is the kind of thing that Moton Customs are really good at. The classic warm tone of brass looks really good against black 
or silver rims. I'm sure that the Ballista is going to suit any modern classic bike with a full length valve stem. It may even look good on some cars. Now they do look really good in this mirror polished form. But personally I prefer it when the mellow and patternized with time. Something that does take a few months before it starts to manifest itself. And that for me is the beauty of brass, the sort of honesty that it reveals over time. Something you don't get with other metals. Considering the quality of manufacture and the design expertise that have gone into this ballista, I have to admit I was pleasantly surprised by the price of these as a pair. And I will as usual leave a link to Motone Customs website for this part. Now before I go, just to touch quickly on the deadline for zero emission vehicles that was recently announced. For clarification, since the publication of that video on Wednesday, it has been brought to my attention that the government have admitted that they created a little bit of confusion with the recent announcement over that deadline. And they now state that for the time being, motorcycles will not be included in that petrol engine ban. Which does sort of raise all sorts of questions in my head, but we'll leave that for another day. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and helping to support this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. If you do subscribe or you are subscribed, please hit the notification button so that you can be kept informed of any new uploads from my channel. I will of course be back next week, so until then, ride safely and I'll see you soon.